It is the time of the day we like the best. We imagine the faint glimmer of the evening star watching over us. And we forget everything as we sink into the protective fold of sleep. It was a dagger to the heart, and, and it was 
but it was also this appreciation for the Candace Jordan and for other members of the family who had survived this and who lived and made a way so the rest of the family could live, you know, who were partakers, were builders, who didn't give up and, and fought, the, fought the fight and stayed in the game and, and passed on love despite the, the lifestyle that they lived. There were about 10 people that gave their time and their bodies for art. <laughs> And um, we, I, you know, I, I had their heads cast for this story right here, and their bodies cast for the slave ship. You know, I also wanted to bring them up because one of the things that one of the models said to me was how it reminded them of what the slaves might have experienced. I mean, being objectified, having to hold this position. Did you feel? Did you have moments of reflection? Were you, what, what were you thinking when we were wrapping you up and casting you and so forth? Well, I was thinking that this is, um, it really does give you an idea of what they may have experienced. Um, just standing in that position for 30 minutes and not being able to move, people working all on you, and it was just, it was an exhilarating experience because I never experienced that before, but it also gave me a sense of what um, what was experienced on that, the ships. Well, you know, I take all of these experiences and say times that, times nuclear blast. You know, you don't have a way of escape. On your darkest days, your day of, you know, you might be in traffic and I feel trapped. It will never be the total surrender of your identity, of your life, of your children, and then several decades of that as well. Um, and Brenda was also, I can't believe, you were much shorter and smaller and then you grew up fast, but, uh, but he's one of my favorite uh, busts on this wall as well as uh, on the slave ship in there. Now, this wall, it, it's, it's basically the ocean's journey. Um, two, of, two of the individuals on this are not the descendants of slaves, but mainly everyone on this is. And so it, it speaks to those that were not, who have African connections, have African roots. Sam Sir Paul is one of them, uh, who's from Ghana. All right, so um, just a few words here on the, the uh, personal tour you just saw with Tony Scott here at camp. I think it was really good. It made me really realize how important family is and just where we come from. Um, it was really emotional for me just to imagine how lucky that we are and it just made me rethink and really a humble experience. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing today? shoulder width. 17 inches was what you got. And if you're, you know, a really tall person or a wide person, you can imagine how uncomfortable that is. But besides that, imagine a couple of months on a ship, tied, chained together, feces, uh, menses, rats, vomit, 
get people connected to you, the ship can barely breathe, so forth and so on. It's your worst. It's not even a nightmare we can even imagine. It's even, you know, it sees that. One of the stories I will never forget was when Grandma, or we pronounce it Grandma, and still do, was out picking berries on the side of the road. She'd never gone to school. And she came upon a cartridge, a bullet, lying by the side of the road. Having no knowledge of its proper use, she thought it be, to be a weapon all by itself. And with great care, she hid it away from, for just the right moment. And one day, while chopping wood for the family stoves, the old woman came out to watch her. You better watch out, Grandma said. These wood chips flying, and you liable to get hit. The old woman, not about to take orders from a nigger, told her to shut up and get to work. Soon after the soon the opportune moment came when the old woman was looking away, Grandma took the bullet out of her apron pocket and with all her might, she threw it at the old woman's head and it landed flush on the temple. A blood curdling scream from the old woman brought out the whole family to see what was going on. And Grandma began to explain, I told her to watch out for the wood chips. <laughs> but though they didn't know about the bullet, she still got a beating, which was the least of her pain. And not being successful with the one woman, one weapon that she thought would give her a taste of revenge was a bitter disappointment. How can it be, she wondered. I know it hit her. Why didn't she die? Well, that said a lot of things to me. I mean, besides, you know, just an insight of who she was and what she went through. But how hope was lost the day that she threw that bullet. So I imagine that bullet being wrapped up and you're thinking, every day I've got a way out of here. It's just, I'm just waiting for that minute. And then it's thrown, and then that's hope gone. Mm -hmm. All right, let me ask some questions. What kind of emotion? Anger, happy, sad, uh, sad, confused, yeah. sad, sad. All right, so uh, what was your impression in your name? Uh, my name is Delphia Witty Sampson. Um, these are my kids. And hello, hello. <laughs> um, I met Tony a few months ago, and the very first thing I saw when I met her was the sculpture. And um, she gave me some background into what she was doing and um, told me about the exhibit here. So I'm here, and I'm really impressed by what she's been able to do and how she's been able to um, pretty much take history and fit it into one little room. and I saw my Uncle Bobby hanging on her tree. Men new family. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 my Uncle Bobby hanging on her tree. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh,
once. Second time I filmed it, and each time I see how the children grab these books and look like, wow, yeah. <laughs> they're in school and they're not getting this education. Because they don't know anything about it, and we fail to tell the history. If you do not know where you come from, how can you be who you were meant to be without the food? Without the food, you have no knowledge. And she brought food. She came to feed us. And we were fed. And your name and place of origin? I am, my name is Gwendolyn Stevens. And I come from Cachado, Louisiana. Cachado, Louisiana? What a beautiful name. You are who? I am a long line of Stevens. So you know your history too? Um, sort of. The last three years, I have went home to search out my history. To find out who I am. Good things that you have to say about the California African American Museum, Tony Scott, the artist. Well, the first thing I want to say is that I was a docent here 20 years ago and gave some tours. And so being here now is extremely important and inspirational because, again, you know, dreaming one day to be here and then now being here is just a day of celebration. And I'm just really grateful to have a place to show this work and have a, have a home and have a community of people that come out and, and experience. Each time I come back, uh, my spirit is different, I feel better, I know about my grandfather who built uh, first AME in Third Ward. I know of the history of the Masons. Uh, I have some very strong aunties, some very handsome uncles. Um, it made me feel sure of myself. I saw land, I saw graveyards, I saw churches. And before, I was caught up in all the world. And in maybe like the last three years, uh, my view on life has changed a great deal. So we have to know our history. Somehow it's comforting for it's you. Very comforting. Mm. It's very comforting. You're a part. It gave me hope. It gave me the hope I needed. Yes, ma'am, and your name one more time? Gwendolyn Stevens. Gwendolyn Stevens, long line of Stevens from Louisiana. Thank you so very much.